We ready, Alan? Well, good evening. We'd like to welcome everyone out this evening to the 2020 Clinch County Farm Bureau um, Political Forum. I'm Barry Smith, Clinch County Farm Bureau President. Um, on behalf of myself, the board directors, and uh, all the employees of Clinch County Farm Bureau and the members, we'd like to thank uh, all of our participants for being here with us, all of our candidates for um, county offices. And uh, we're going to kind of skip over a lot of the introductions and all like that and just get straight into it. Our first group of candidates we have up here, we have uh, for the candidate of probate judge and a board of education. And uh, we'll give each of y'all um, 30 seconds to introduce yourself and then we'll get started with the questions. We'll start right here with Mr. Will Joyce. Um, Will Joyce, I um, lived here all of my life, all except for the uh, few months that I went to South Georgia College over in Douglas. Um, I'm married to Monica Smith Joyce. Um, we have two daughters, Micah and JJ. Um, I am a member of New Vision Church of God and currently serve on the pastor's council there. Um, also, I've Sunday school teacher there at the uh, for the teenagers and serving mission trips down in South America, down in Ecuador. I'm Kimberly Smith. I'm born and raised here in Clinch County. Um, I'm married to John Smith for 24 years. We have three daughters and one granddaughter. And. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Hello, I'm Joanne Lacey. I'm married to Alexander Lacey. I have two daughters, uh, Taylor and Tyre Lacey, which graduated from Clinch County High School. I'm a member of Lighthouse Assembly of God, and I'm looking forward to uh, running for post two Board of Education, and thank you. All righty, since we got the microphone all that in, we'll start with our Board of Education first. Um, to our two candidates for board education, what steps will you take in the future to help ensure the protection of our children? First of all, I believe uh, each child is is important to our um, school system. So I think that we need to take each child as one, and we need to uh, investigate all our which we do an investigation, but we need to do a further investigation into our hiring. And um, we need to just make sure that we hire someone that's, okay, we need to make sure that we hire somebody that uh, uh, that's gonna um, do the best for our children. Can you repeat the question? What steps will you take to ensure, take in the future to help ensure the protection of our children? Uh, I think the most important thing is to provide a great atmosphere, a positive atmosphere for our children uh, so they feel comfortable, but also provide a, a good atmosphere for our staff and our employees so everybody's working uh, toward a common goal and they feel, they feel like they're needed, they feel like they're loved and in a respected place where they can get a great education and uh, parents can, can get a a good return on their investment for their children. Thank you very much. And uh, I forgot our timekeepers right here on the front row, they'll be giving you with your time with your 45, 30, 15, and time seconds. Um, all right, we'll move on to a probate judge. What are your qualifications? What do you feel your qualifies you to be the probate judge? I have worked with Carlene Oberry for nine and a half years. Um, I have handled magistrate, probate, and traffic courts, as well as vital records, um, weapons carry license, and just being a clerk all together for all 
three courts. Um, and I mean, there's a lot to learn and I'm willing to my best to do everything I can. Um, anytime that there's a an elected official that's retiring, you know, and a new person is going to fill it, that, that position is going to be a on-the-job training. Um, I've never really had a problem with training as I've, I've been through the fire academy, I've gone through EMT school, I've gone through paramedic school. Um, even when I took over as the EMA director, you know, I, I had on-the-job training that I had to do at that time. and. Currently, I'm working on my bachelor's degree in education. So training and education is not really a problem to me. And this job is going to require a lot of on-the-job training, which I am I look forward to doing. All right, thank you. Um, next question, we'll move back to the Board of Education. What do you see as any current challenges concerning our public school system? Uh, current challenges in the number one is children with cell phones. We, we got to get their attention back. Uh, we, we rely so much on them and they rely so much on them. And it seems like just a cell phone or taking a lot of their attention span and, and getting those hopefully to out of their hands for a little while so they can get back to getting education. Um, another challenge is, is keeping good qualified personnel. We need the best available people and to provide them a great working condition and provide the staff with all they need. And if we can get them all they need in a good working relationship with our community, then we can pass that on to our children and our children can only succeed from there. First of all, we, we uh, our teachers have got to be able to listen to the parents some because there's classes that our teachers that that they need to take and they're not they don't they're not familiar with the classes that they need to take especially uh with our autism children i'm very i've been visiting the school so i'm very interested in our artistic uh area because uh when a child comes and he has problems uh, that teacher has got to be able to address all the problems that that, that child has and get that child to the best of their ability because all we want is that child to do their best and achieve where they need to go in life. Thank you. Thank you. Um, move on next back to uh, probate judge. Um, if elected, what improvements or changes will you make as probate judge? The only change that I would want to do is Skype as far as um, when we do our bond hearings, so we won't have to be face to face with them. Um, and we can also do warrants um, via cell phone. And I think that's the only change that I would make. Um, really, you, you say, what changes would you make? Miss Carlene Oberry had been in that office for many years and never ran a post. So, you know, that says a lot that she's done a lot of good in that office. Um, I do agree with the possible of Skype. Um, another thing is Zoom, using for uh, Zoom meetings to, to uh, have these hearings, and that way you're not meeting face to face, especially with the COVID-19 that's going on right now. Um, Technology would be the biggest change that, that you would look at making in that particular office. All righty. Um, speaking of that, back to the Board of Education. Um, with COVID-19 and the early closures, of, early closures of the schools, what are your thoughts on the future of online learning in our rural community? Um, online learning in here is going to be, of course, difficult due to our internet capabilities. I, I live on the edge of town and my internet is, is subpar at best. So that will be a big, a big challenge. And I think hopefully that uh, going through this, folks in Atlanta and our represent, elected representatives have seen this. So that's one thing. And then being able to, if you're gonna learn offsite like this, making sure our, our parents and our grandparents and aunts that are helping facilitate the training, that are able to do that and, and not 
not let anything slide through. You know, it's better to me to be able to teach as a group in a school with professionals, but we have to make do as in with this situation we've had to. And I uh, commend our folks that they've done a fantastic job having to do this on the fly. And I could see in the future, I'm sure they'll be better prepared. Well, first of all, our school has got to learn the capability that they have because after looking at the news, um, different counties have did different things like they took the bus and put internet, internet on the bus for the children that didn't have internet in their area. So Clinch County's got to grow, got to kind of come to the ball and help our children get where they need to go. Because I don't, I think we just didn't, we didn't go the extra mile for our children. If we have to go to online learning, we have got to get on the ball and find out all the programs that we can give to our children. All right, thank you. Um, last question for the probate judge. We are, our crackpot team of um, question askers, we researched on this and we are sure, pretty sure we didn't, we uh, weren't able to come up with one. As, I mean, come up to find if this was, uh, if we had one or not, I says, but do you believe that there should be a marshal or constable to carry out the actions of the court, such as repossessions, or do you feel things are fine as they currently are? I feel like they're fine the way they are. I, I would have to say I'm a supporter of the Second Amendment. I feel like they, they're fine the way they are. I mean, I'm, I have a concealed carry or a Georgia carry license now. I deer hunt. I mean, I don't see how you can infringe upon those Second, those second Amendment rights on your folks. All right, our final question for the Board of Education. What will you do, what will you do to take claims, claims or complaints from students or staff more seriously when first reported? Well, hopefully we will utilize chain of command. They would go to the teacher first. If they didn't feel like they got the response they deserve, we'll go to the principal. And if you don't get the response, go to the superintendent. And if they didn't, you know, you would hope they would never have to bring it to you, but that's what we're there for, to represent citizens. Um, so you would definitely want to go to the, go back to the superintendent, start up top, start with your chain of command and work through that and try to help facilitate that. We don't want to do too much. We're there for policy and procedure to help facilitate that and work on budgets. You know, we need to let the professionals do what they can and let their training carry them. Well, Clinch County, they dropped the ball this time on that because I have had complaints and I have went and talked to the principal and I haven't gotten any answers. I have had to go to the to the uh, superintendent and I still haven't gotten any answers. So therefore, we have got to listen. That's why I'm saying it doesn't matter what child it is. If that child make a complaint, we need to write it down. We need to research it. We need to get the information that needed and we need to do what we need to do for that child. We have our Clinch County really failed our children on that on this situation. All right, thank you very much. Well, this concludes our first portion of the political forum tonight. We'd like to thank our candidates, and uh, we'll take a quick little break, and we'll come back in just a few minutes with our county commission candidates. All right, we'll, uh, we'll get started with our second round here um, with the county commissioners, and uh, we'll start right there with uh, Mr. Jay Witherspoon. We'll let him introduce himself and say what he needs to say and move along. Yes, I'm Jay E. Witherspoon. I'm married to Minnie Witherspoon. I have two children, Deidre and little Jay E. I mean, something? No, I mean, just, you know, you know, just anything you got you want to say or whatever, you know, anything like your platform or, you know, which commission, which post you're running for. Or... 
Yes, I'm running for post three, commissioner for post three. My platform is that the most critical thing that we need in this county at this time is industry and small businesses. But let me say this to you. That's easily said than done. There's 159 counties in the state of Georgia. We're one of 159. Every one of them is competing for the same thing we are. So we got to be aggressive. We have to go at it. We have to be prepared. Our industrial park has to be to the point where there's no question. Water, electrical, sewage, anything, good roads, these must be in place before other industries will consider Clinch County. Me, Bear? Yes, sir. Oh. Roger Metz. I'm uh, currently the post three representative on the county commission, and uh, I think we got a good thing going. We got good equipment. We got good people working for us, and I don't see a whole lot of changes that we need to make. Thank you. Uh, Chad Brown. I'm the post two county commissioner, Clinch County. We're running for re-election. Just like Roger said, I mean, everything's working good. We got a good board. We've all worked together. And that's it. Hi, I'm Henry Moreland. Um, first off, I believe in Jesus Christ and serve him first with what I do. Um, I'm married to Bonnie Moreland and I uh, have two children, two grandchildren. We lived here all of our life. I've served this community as a teacher, as a coach, as a assistant principal, principal, superintendent, nine years here in this county, two in Stewart County. Uh, I love serving people and love serving Clinch County. That is my most important job right now. And I can assure you, no one goes unnoticed in this county. All right, well, thank you much. Well, we'll start off uh, with the questions, and we can't have a county commission forum without asking about the roads, so we'll go ahead and start off with the roads. Uh, what is your opinion of the current maintenance department with roads and any other maintenance that they do as far as the county, and do you see any room for improvement within those departments? Certainly, you know, improvement is always is something we can always do. All of us can improve in whatever we do. Personally, I'm very pleased with our road system we have in Clinch County. I think our road department and Stephen Hendricks does an excellent job in keeping our roads. I know I spend a lot of time working bees outside of the county and in a different, different counties where they have the county roads are no comparison to our county roads in this county as I work through, as I work through those counties. Uh, one of the biggest things that's happened to us over the last a um, couple of years is that, that the region passed a T-SPLOST, and T-SPLOST will bring $39 million into this county, and where we only are going to take and uh, raise $6 million. So we are doing very well with our roads. Uh, we got a lot, of, uh, a lot of paving and resurfacing going on throughout the county. Thank you all very much. Concerning the roads in the, uh, throughout the county, at this present time, they're in good shape. As far as improvement, there's always you know, room for improvement because that's the name of the, the game. We, we will always continue to try to improve and any other aspect, bridges or any, anything else concerning the road department or what? The personnel that are presently working with the road department are fine, fine individuals, and I look forward to working with them as well. Our road department, we got 10 people working in it. We got four new graders, we got a brand new dump truck. All of it's under lease or, I mean, we're up to date. We got great equipment. We got a new bulldozer. We got a 
great all. We're in good shape with our road department. And if somebody needs a road fixed, all they got to do is call. And we try to get to it that day if it's not 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Thank you. Um, I say we got a great road superintendent. We got good county employees that's with the road department. I mean, there's always things we could do better, but I got to say that our, our roads are probably some of the best in, around in the state of Georgia. Thank you. We'll keep it down there on that end. We'll start and we'll, okay, okay, we'll bring it back down. Um, and this, uh, I know some of y'all addressed this in the opening statement. What do you think could be done to encourage new industry and business to come to Clinch County? I think we're always looking for ways to bring new in industry into our county. Of course, one of the problems that we have is our labor force. Um, we are very, very, very blessed to have people like Lee Container and Mauser and Connors Woodyard, the hospital, the school system. We have some large employees already here. Um, I think what we need to do in this county, we always need to be looking for a smaller industry that would come in that maybe employ up to 25 people. And I think that we can provide that. We're always looking for ways to improve and give people in this county a greater chance to find a better job and to be able to improve themselves and improve their standards of living. And, uh, and that's uh, very difficult to do because everybody's looking for somebody to come in. And uh, like I said, we do a good job. We've got fine industrial parks that have done, have done well, and, uh, and we have places that we can take and allow people to come in too. For, for other industries to locate here, we have to be very aggressive. We've got to go after them. They're not coming to you. We want them, and they would like to be here, but it's got to be under the understanding that we are prepared for them before they get here. The industrial park must be of excellence. Like I repeated before, it must have the services that every industry needs. They come in there and they do surveys to see if we will have the workforce that will accommodate them. And at this point, I think we've got the workforce here that will support any industry that may come. Thank you. I am on the industrial authority and you're welcome to any of our meetings as in the paper. There's nobody that works any harder than the people on that authority to get help of, of some kind of industry here. Y'all just don't know what the job it is. And we got to have housing for people to live in if they're going to commute and come in here. So, you know, <clears throat> I'll agree. We need some industry and we got a good industrial park on the east and the west side of town. Thank you. I mean, I agree with, too, we need more industry, and I think we got a, the, the right bunch on industrial authority, the, but they're doing all they can do, and um, I just, I mean, at this time, I don't think there's a lot of industry looking to come to Clinch County, because, um, we, like I said, we got a great bunch on there just working for it. All right, uh, next question said, if new resources were to become available, what is one area of county services that you feel like needs the most additional attention? Okay, new resources is gonna be difficult because in the month of April, I think the state of Georgia in itself is looking at a billion dollar shortfall. And talking with our representatives this past week, talking to most of them, uh, they're going back in the session just as soon as they can. And their main emphasis is going to be trying to figure out where they're going to make the cuts. I think the governor's already told each department to cut 14% from their budget for this next year. So um, certainly resources are something that we're always looking for to difficult uh, to, come to uh, come about. One thing I've been very proud of that we've done over the last eight years as I've been in office, the county has not raised their millage rate one bit but yet we have increased our fund balance to take and help us to be able to take and operate this county without any extra cost 
to the taxpayers from the county. And that's very important to me is being able to hold taxes because the taxpayers already have had enough pressure put on them trying to survive from day to day. Thank you. We've got some of the finest resources in the state of Georgia right here in this little community. We've got a major railroad that goes through here. We're soon to have two four-lane highways, 84 and 441. We've got an airfield out here that will accommodate commercial airlines. At this time, we need to start utilizing all these resources. One of the resources that we are not at this time utilizing to what I expect it should be, we've got thousands of vehicles that pass through this city every day. And in those vehicles, these are customers. But you have to have, you have to have businesses and other things in order for them to stop. We're not taking advantage of the personnel that are coming through this city. And I hope that in the future we will. We do have some great resources and we try to capitalize on them on a day-to-day -day basis. We need small businesses and we need a workforce take care of those small businesses. We got to concentrate more on getting jobs for 25 or 30 people, just like we did the industrial authority. If we don't do that, we're sinking, and I don't want that to happen. I would do anything to, to help this county. Thank you. Well, I say we got we got great resources, like and um and like what Henry said, our millage rate hadn't been raised in 13 years. It's still at 10.953. Um, but we do need more industries here. And um, our small businesses, and just like Jay was saying, people coming through, got, I mean, they, have, they could spend more money here if we had more businesses. All right, uh, last question, and this is the one that will kind of flow over when we talk getting into the sheriff candidates, too. What is your opinion of the current situation with the county jail, I guess, as it relates to, the, I guess, budgeting and, and whatever else? Right, the county jail has become a big issue. Um, when the sheriff approached us back several years ago about the jail, he was concerned about being able to house to be able to keep prisoners in jail. You know, your jail is supposed to be able to keep them inside. And so we were having a hard time keeping prisoners there, and that brought about the safety of those that were around. Uh, when we were talk when we talked about this, we looked, and I think it was about a million dollars what it was going to cost to bring the jail up to date. Then the question I had was, until like teaching what the student teacher ratio, I asked her what the jailer to prison ratio is, and what I was told was that the recommendation was uh, was was one to every eight to ten. And so when you start figuring one to every eight to 10, I got to hurry, one to eight to every 10, that's 16 jailers. You're, ta you're, you're talking about pushing the budget out of sight is what you're talking about. You have to hire 16 people to go in and do that, feed them and do all these things. For $35 a day, you can't do any better than $35 a day housing a prisoner. I'm not extremely happy with the fact that we're housing prisoners in Douglas. I think the cost factor is way above what should we what we should be paying. When you think about the excess of two hundred thousand dollars above, that's an extremely large amount of money. I don't like the idea that the jail is in the heart of this city. It should never have been put in the heart of the city. The courthouse is the central issue. It's the nucleus of Clinch County. If we do build a new jail, I want us to put it outside the city limits. I want it to be somewhere where there's room for expansion, but 
there needs to, this needs to be addressed by the commission, and I hope this issue comes up if I'm on board because I certainly want to have a decision as to the jail issue. The jail issue has been discussed at length a couple, three times at the county commissioner's meeting. And you just put it on paper. If we build a jail, which would be from five to eight million dollars, we don't know what the cost is now. We, we have looked into it. But you're talking six, at least six hundred thousand dollars a year to hire your people, have them there, feed them, medical. You got to have a nurse there and a doctor on call. Uh, it's it's just a big thing, you know. And the best choice we had when we did it, or when Raymond did it, was uh, to go to Douglas or Waycross or Valdosta, and Douglas would take them the cheapest. Thank you. Yeah, when all this come up, it was going to cost us one to two million dollars to fix the jail we have now, and five million to build a new one. Um, so it's thirty twenty five dollars a day when we first started going to Douglas, and now it's thirty five, I think. I'm in favor of building a new jail if we could do a tri-county jail with the other three counties just in with the 911. But I, and we'd have to get some kind of grants to try to build one here in Clinch County on our own. Right now, the best thing for us is uh, to send them to Coffee County because, like I said, we got it costs. We got to have more jailers. Uh, not and plus, we got to have a contract with a nurse or a doctor. So. That's it. Let's hold it right there. This we'll, we'll come back this way. That was our last question for a county commission, and we'll. Uh, I didn't do it with the first group, but they looked like they wasn't equipped to get out of here anyway. So we'll give y'all another last 30 seconds. If y'all got anything else y'all want to say, you know, final appeal or whatever. Well, like I said before, I'm Chad Brown, I'm running for post two county commissioner re-election. I'm. I've enjoyed serving Clinch County post two for. The time I've been here, and I would love to continue to serve Clinch County. This is my second term on uh, <clears throat> post three. I've enjoyed every minute of it. I've looked after the taxpayers' money as well as anybody, I guess, could. I, I just don't like to spend somebody else's money. But uh, I appreciate the cooperation I've had out of the other county commissioners and the people in the county. And uh, I appreciate it, and I would appreciate your vote and uh, put me back in for four more years. When I spoke about resources earlier, one of the greatest resources that we have and that we lose, they're born here, they're educated here, and because of lack of opportunities here, we lose our best minds. That's sad, because so many of them want to stay here, but they have to leave because there's not enough opportunities here available to them. And I hope in the future that new industry and, sm and small businesses will locate here, and therefore they'll have a chance to remain home. Okay, I want to end by thanking Georgia Farm Bureau and Creek Box and WBTY and Clinton County News for being here, for sponsoring this, for giving to the, the people of this county an opportunity to hear what the candidates have to say. Uh, I don't have a whole lot more. I love to serve this county. I love the people of this county, and I will continue to serve this county as I always have. And uh, and just 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 ask the voters of Post Five that they will continue to to trust me and, and to believe in me and vote for me on June the 9th. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll take another little quick break and let our county commission candidates get down and uh, let our sheriff candidates get up here for our final round. Um, with the candidates for sheriff, we'll start right here with Mr. Tinsley. We'll give them all opportunity to introduce themselves, speak a little bit about themselves and what their platform might be and just let them say what they need to say before we get started with the questions.
talking about turning it on. <laughs> All right. Um, so anyway, my name's Stephen Tinsley, and uh, I grew up here in Clinch County. Uh, went to high school here. Got on with the sheriff's office here and worked. And then I wanted to better myself and better my career and learn new ideas and new uh, have new adventures and support my family. So I went and got a job with the Georgia Bureau of Investigations after working with them here in Clinch County on several investigations. Uh, learned how to work an array of cases from murders to uh, homicides, just working death investigations and burglaries and corruptions and things of that matter. Um, I moved off to the Drug Enforcement Administration, served the last 22 years with that, and came back two and a half years ago after I retired. Hello, I'm Sheriff Raymond Peterson. I'm married to Crystal Smith Peterson, and we enjoy raising our daughter, Ray Lynn, and we do this right here in Clinch County. I've had the pleasure of serving you all for the past 20 years right here in Clinch. I have always had and always will have an open door policy. If any citizens has a question or would like to just drop by and just talk for a while, I'm easily reached. Here are some of the things I would like to share with everybody about the Sheriff's Office. The average law enforcement experience at Clinch County SO is over 20 years. As compared to surrounding agencies, our size and only seven to 10 years of experience. That says a lot about our citizens here and the deputies who serve them. Over the past four years, there has been a lot of changes in our nation, our state, and our county. Some good, some not so good. My team of deputies strive every day to make Clinch County a better place to live and raise our families, from traffic enforcement to in-depth investigations. I'm proud to say I am live in Clinch County and will always serve the citizens of Clinch County. Good evening. My name is John Davis. I was born and raised here in Clinch County. Um, Marion and I have been married for 33 years. We have three children and two grandsons. I'm a proud veteran of the United States Air Force. Uh, I have a college degree in criminal justice from Vidal State University. And I've just retired March 1st after spending 30 years in state law enforcement, retiring with Department of Community Supervision. Um, we looked at over a, a thousand cases in the Lap Hall Circuit and covered over 2,000 square miles uh, in the Lap, Lap Hall Circuit, which included all five counties. Um, I've been on the, I was on the rec board for 20 years where I served the last 12 as a chairman. And I've been on the school board for eight years where I served the last four as chairman. Um, I feel like I've got the education, the uh, experience, and the leadership abilities to put a team of, of staff or and officers together here in Clinch County um, that will protect and serve all of the citizens in Clinch County. Uh, and I look forward to doing that. I appreciate your prayers and, um, and thank everyone for their support. My name is Tom Kennedy. Um, I'm running for sheriff for Clinch County. I'm married to Emily Kennedy, and today is actually our 18th anniversary. So we've got twin boys that are 14, Thomas and Taylor, and little girl, Ella Catherine, who's 10. Um, my main goal for the sheriff's department is to make Clinch County a better and safer place to live and to raise our families. Um, by my goal of doing that, well, the main thing I want to do by doing that is using our greatest asset that Clinch County has. That greatest asset is the citizens of Clinch County. I'll make sure that our Sheriff's Department creates a better, stronger relationship between the Sheriff's Department and the citizens of Clinch County to achieve that goal. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. I want to thank Farm Bureau, Creek Box TV, Clinch County News, and WBTY for hosting this tonight. Thank you. All right, we'll just leave it down there and start with you, Tom. Um, we finished up with the county commissioners talking about the jail, and I said we was going to move it on to y'all, so we'll give y'all a moment here to talk what your opinion is on the current jail situation and your opinions on if you think we need one here or are you happy with the situation that's going on right now. I'd love to have a jail in Clinch County. It creates jobs. It creates jobs for the food service industry. But the facts are is that the last time we had a jail and now, 
the difference is not quite $200,000. If you look at one line item of a budget, yeah, the difference is $200,000. It's costing over $400,000 to pay Coffee County to house our inmates. But when you look at the insurance for the jailers that we have to have, we have to have more jailers now than we did four years ago. When you take all that into account, it's probably taken maybe an extra fifty or $75,000 a year to house our inmates in Coffee County. But what's not taken into account with that is, is we have to build a new jail. If we build a new jail, it does. It's going to cost millions of dollars. Um, to fix the jail we've got now, it's going to cost a million to two million dollars to fix it. So it, it's not necessarily whether you want it or not, but we're going to have to look at it and figure out what's best for the taxpayers of Clinch County and see if we can afford to build a new jail or to fix our old jail. Thank you. Okay, and with the jail, you know, I heard the county commissioners put some figures out there and, and, and Tom just discussed it as well. Um, I don't think you can explain to a taxpayer that you or it's going to cost you over $200,000 a year to house your inmates in Coffee County. Uh, and that's not counting gas, not counting wear and tear on your vehicle, taking the officer out of the, not only out of the county, but out of the circuit. Um, you've got to go get your inmates when, when you have court once a month. Um, so I think we need to look at options of at least getting our inmates back in the circuit and hopefully back in the county. Now, Tri-County Jail would be wonderful. You could split the cost three ways. Um, building a new jail, I think, would be an option. Uh, but we're going to have to look at it sooner or later. We can't keep um, housing our inmates outside the circuit um, and, and, and the taxpayers having to, to, to you know, to, to eat that money. So um, we're going to have to look at it for sure. The topic of the jail has been an exhausting one. I've heard a lot about what other candidates would do about the jail if you let it. Let me take a moment and explain the choice that I had to make to close our jail. The cost to bring our current jail up to current regulations would be over $1 million. The cost to build a new facility would be between five and $6 million. The cost to staff the jail at current regulations would be $620,460. Correction officers, 16 officers at $9.25 an hour would be $307,840. Benefits for those officers would be $160,000. Medical staff, over 100,000. Meal for average inmates population, 36 to 40, would be 52,560. County match retirement and workers' compensation, this amount depends on employee. This does not include the cost of the jail maintenance and electricity. When I decided to close our age jail, it was for the best interest of Clinch County taxpayers, the safety of those taxpayers and the safety of those who had to be incarcerated. Here's what the current inmate housing costs Clinch County taxpayers. 434,100 total annual cost to house in other jurisdictions. This is a minimum saving of 96,300 of your tax money saved. I've heard all the other candidates speak about how they were going to open the jail, but what I haven't heard is how they plan on doing this without costing taxpayers a lot more money. The uh, figures that are being thrown out here are based on to The figures that are being thrown out here are based on the activity of the sheriff's office with today's uh, accounts or this past year's accounts. Um, obviously, with uh, the county commissioners have been discussing uh, new in industry coming here, new businesses. Therefore, that's going to create more cr crime and just just in attrition. And therefore, we will need more jail space and the cost is going to continue to rise regardless of, of what the current situation is. We are going to have to address this in the future. I plan to get with the county commissioners, get with other jails, get with other sheriff's offices, and make a decision and go forward with it, whatever it is to benefit our taxpayers and our community here in Clinch County. All right, um, next question. We'll start here with Mr. Stephen. Um, to the candidates, what will you do to tackle our growing meth opiate problem in our community? And uh, 
for Sheriff Peterson would just address it, what your opinion is on it. Um, this is an area that um, of my expertise. As I've, for the last 22 years, I've been a, a special agent with the Drug Enforcement Administration as well as a supervisor handling hundreds of agents and officers, local task force officers, to address just this issue. The, the plans that I would do would be to identify the people who are involved in it, the organizations that are involved in it, not just the people using and the people on the street corners selling it. I'm talking about the people who's manufacturing it and distributing it to our community. And then you would come up with a game plan and I would use resources that I've worked with through the past um, 29 years of law enforcement and get them to come assist us in, in making uh, that problem go away. It can be done, I've done it in other communities throughout the United States. Uh, it just takes an initiative and a desire to make it happen. The drug problem in Clinton County is a major issue to me and my department. In the past, it was a lot easier to catch drug dealers because they manufactured and grew the drugs locally. Nowadays, methamphetamines is a worldwide epidemic. Hardly anyone cooks meth anymore. Almost all the recent meth cases made in our jurisdiction has been crystal ice. Crystal is manufactured in other countries and smuggled into the United States and then transported to communities such as ours. I have also been asked about the opioid problem or prescription pill problems. This problem is derived from what we call pill clinics or pill farms. This is when a clinic prescribes someone way more medication than what is necessary to help in the healing process. We work closely with the GBI and other jurisdictions in an attempt to stop this from happening. But a lot of medications are mailed, ordered, and from other countries. Along with use of illegal drugs comes other crimes such as burglaries and thefts. These crimes are committed to help the addicted drug users supply their habit. My office does a great job at investigating those thefts, recovering property, and making arrests of those who commit the crimes. I had the opportunity to listen to one of the candidates state that jails is not the best place for everyone who commits crimes, and I agree with this. But with over 20 years of experience in our community, I see a failing rehabilitation system. It has been my experience where we repeat offenders that you can only rehabilitate the ones who want to make a positive change. Drugs are now and have been a serious problem. I have recently began working hand in hand with several federal agencies to rid our community of these repeat offenders to include the U.S. Marshals and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I think the drug problem in Clinton County is a major problem, and we've had issues with it for a long time. We hadn't, as far as I can see and know, we hadn't worked drugs on a daily basis in over 10 years. What our current administration has been has been a reactive agency, so the only, the only thing they do is they react when something happens. We've got to be proactive. We've got to get ahead of these issues. Uh, you got to work drugs on a daily basis, whether you, you may not make an arrest the next two or three months, um, but you'll have the information you need to make good arrests when you do. Um, you just got to stay on top of it. You just can't react when something happens. Um, I've been with the uh, probation division for the last 30 years, and I've been able to work closely, uh, close enough with all five sheriffs that I see what everyone's doing and everyone's not doing and what's working and what's not working. Um, we're just not doing anything here. And, you know, that goes back to our jail costs. When we start uh, being proactive, then our jail cost is going to go up. Uh, it's only going to increase. So, uh, you know, our cost of taking inmates to Coffee County Jail is only going to increase when you get a sheriff in there that's proactive. All right, obviously it is a problem for Clinch County, it's a problem for Georgia, it's a problem for the United States. Um, one thing that we're going to have to do is, is we are going to have to work with other agencies to fight this problem in Clinch County, the opioid problem, the methamphetamine problem. Um, You've got to work together. You've got to bring in other agencies to help. You, and you've got to work. You've got to, you've got to start early. You've got to stay late. You, um, you can't just work eight to five. Um, the other thing, step to that is, is we've also got to educate our young people. We've got to educate the citizens of Clinch County. A lot of problems start with a young 
a young child getting drugs out of their parents medicine cabinet or their grandparents medicine cabinet you've got to educate these kids you've got to educate these parents because the main goal is not to lock up more people for doing it the main goal is for there to be less people that need locking up for doing it and the way to do that is you've got to start with them young with the education program thank you we'll leave it down there um some municipalities within the cities and counties have a consolidated law enforcement forces and some of them will have um, specific officers, you know, one or two de designated that has, that's, I guess, partially funded by the city and partially funded by the county. Um, would you be in favor of such of that partnering with the city of Homerville for uh, some consolidated law enforcement? Yes, yeah, several years ago we had a drug task force that we had the city provided an employee and the county provided an employee. Um, it didn't work out the greatest in the world. I would like to revisit that and, and try to make that work. There was also a drug task force that was um, for several counties, and Clinch County and the city of Homerville provided funds for that. Um, that was one of the last times where we were working together with other counties fighting the drug problem. We've got to find a way to fund that program because it is expensive. It takes lots of manpower, it takes lots of equipment, and, um, and all of that is expensive. So you've got to find the right way to fund that and to make that happen. I think with uh, the limited budget that we have here in Clinton County, which is, you know, the case in, in a lot of your small rural counties, you have to partner up with other folks. You have to use all the resources uh, available to you. Um, I think it's something uh, as far as consolidating city county government as a whole, not just law enforcement, I think it's something that, that you know, we can look at and do a cost analysis on to see if it's something where Clinton County can save some money. Um, but, but for sure, consolidating city and county law enforcement, um, you know, I think would be a good thing, save a lot of money, and you could, uh, you know, combine your resources. I have no problem combining the city and county. We work well with the city now. So putting it all together would make sense. But you have to go through a lot of channels to do that, and it costs a lot to do it. But I haven't got any problems with doing it because, like I said, we all work good together as it is now. My take on this uh, question is no. The answer is no. I do not agree with consolidating the county and the city law enforcement functions. The reason I say no is because the Georgia Sheriff's Association is totally against that. Giving up the authority as a sheriff, I would have to give up my law enforcement authority. And as a county, the county would have to fund a new chief police of, of the county police, which is have to create a whole new position. And as sheriff, I would only be in, involved with the court and the daily activity of it and the security of it and then the jail. And obviously we already have an issue with the jail here in this county. So I hope to get that jail back here. And so and right now, if we did that, like, like the sheriff said, if we did it and went through the steps to make that happen, the only thing we would have as a sheriff's office or as sheriff that I would be responsible for would be the courtroom and the getting people back into to the courtroom. The enforcement side of the house would be completely taken away from us, and I do not agree with that. My experience has been for the last 29 plus years, I've been an investigator, a deputy, a special agent with two different agencies, and my job has been to investigate crimes, put people in jail, put people who belong in jail in, in there, not people that don't belong or just you're just doing it for political reasons or, or, or what they're, you know, they don't have a certain last name that, that can't be put in jail. We need a law enforcement agency in this county that we're going to enforce respectfully and provide service and provide protection and provide safety to our counties. The taxpayers are our biggest concern. I'm one of them. I don't want to waste my resources. I have experience in working with other law enforcement agencies to to, to accomplish a goal that, that we set as an investigation uh, task, 
and we can get the resources. We just have to ask for it and work together. I'm not at all against working together at, in a task force atmosphere with people from the city, with people from the county, with the state, the, the federal government, wherever. But I am against work consolidating the city and county law enforcement. I will be the first to go meet with the, sh the chief of police if elected, and we will definitely have a strong working relationship. But I do not want to give that um, th that authority. I don't want that authority taken away from the sheriff's <clears throat> the sheriff's position in the sheriff's office because I think that the sheriff's office is here to protect and serve, and that's what I will do as sheriff. Thank you. Um, Talk a little bit about experiences you have concerning a budget and your staff management. Um, like I said, with 29 years of law enforcement experience, I have worked with hundreds and hundreds, literally, of different agencies, from police departments, sheriff's offices, throughout this, the United States, in Mexico, in Colombia, in Europe. I have been there. I have had to struggle to find resources and funds to work cases that, that the type of cases that, that we work have, you know, you have to generate funding before you can go forward. We, we can do nothing without having a plan and, a, and a, a task identified, a goal to meet, and funding to make it happen. I have a strong uh, expertise in, in gaining those funds from working as a team with whatever agency we uh, choose to work with. I also have been a supervisor for approximately eight years now on the, on the federal level, and I, have my, I had my own office. I had a yearly budget of about 1.5 million. I have personally oversaw building a new facility, and it, was, it cost an additional 1.6 million just for that building and, and redoing a building. So. I know how to work a budget. I had vehicles to plant to to uh, uh, cure and take care of, and that's just what I've done. And I got the expertise to do it, and that would be no issue. I've been with the sheriff's department for 20 years here in Clinch County. I've been the sheriff for three years, so I've had to do a budget for three years. I work real good with the commissioners to keep the budget low, where the taxes don't go up for the citizens of Clinch County. There, you have to work with your commissioners and your citizens to do your job. So as far as the budget and vehicles, we get vehicles through Splosh. We don't, it don't come out of the taxpayers' money. It comes out of Splosh, which is everybody coming through. So we got a good budget. We work good with commissioners, and I want to keep it that way. And like I was saying earlier, uh, I just retired with 30 years of experience with uh, uh, Georgia Department of Corrections and uh, Pardons and Parole Board. Uh, I was over, uh, was, was fortunate to be promoted to the top position uh, at the end of my career in 2014 as a Chief Probation Officer. Um, like I say, we had over 1,000 active cases in five counties and we covered over 2,000 square miles. Um, I had over 10, 10 to 12 officers um, in that agency and, and 10 vehicles that we looked after. Um, and we had a uh, several hundred thousand dollar budget that we had to, uh, to manage. I've also had to manage a, a good budget with the uh, school board. I think our budget uh, last, last uh, year was around two million, I mean $10 million. Um, also, I uh, was on the rec board for 20 years uh, where we had to deal with, with about a $100,000 budget. So um, I've got a lot of experience in managing people and managing budgets. I've been mayor for Homerville for the past six years and I was on the council for four years before that and I was on the rec board, board a couple years before that. Um, I've managed budgets, I know how to manage a budget. And it's not always just about managing budgets. Um, you've also got to find, get creative in ways of finding revenues. Um, they are paying for the trucks and the vehicles out of the splashed account, which doesn't come out of the tax base, the local tax base. It comes from, from everyone that comes through Clinch County. But one of the things we can do is we can apply for grants. Um, overseeing the police department as mayor and on the city council in the last 10 years, we've gotten grants to help pay for 
um, to help pay for employee salaries. We've gotten grants to help pay for vehicles. We've gotten grants to help pay for bulletproof vests. Um, Twelve thousand dollars worth of vests cost us twelve hundred dollars. Um, so it's not just about managing the budget, but it's about find, getting creative and finding ways to bring in extra revenue. Um, and so I've got a lot of experience with that and managing people. And so, um, so thank you. All right, um, next question, uh, Tom, while you got it down there, this kind of, um, this one is directed specifically at you. It says you're the only one without prior direct law enforcement experience. What would you say makes you more qualified for the position? Well, it kind of makes me uniquely qualified, Barry. Um, I, it's time to do things a different way. Um, the training that it takes to be the sheriff as far as law enforcement training, I can get that just like everybody else has. What I've got is I've got leadership experience. I've got leadership experience for being the mayor for six years and being the city council for four years. Um, I've got leadership experience before that. Um, I've managed my own business. I've helped manage the family business. Um, so as far as management skills, leadership skills, I've got that. Um, those leadership skills that I've developed by being mayor and city council has helped me work with the citizens of Clinch County. And that's what being sheriff is about. It's not just always about enforcing the law, but it's about being there for the citizens of Clinch County. And if elected sheriff, I will be there for the citizens of Clinch County and help them where it's needed and not just take a reactive approach to it, but I'll take a proactive approach and get involved more, have our sheriff department involved more with our community and with the citizens of Clinch County. All right. Um, to the candidates, if you're elected, how many deputies and staff would you be would you bring on, and what would the cost be to the county? And to Sheriff Peterson, how many deputy and staff do you have, and what is that cost to the county? Starting with me. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Well, right now we currently have 13 or 14 employees total for the sheriff's department as a whole. Um, eight or nine of those are deputies. I don't know the exact number. But I do know that with all those 13 or 14 employees, the payroll for the sheriff's department is around 400 and something thousand dollars a year. Now, when you add the insurance benefits to that, adds another $150,000 to that. So you're up there around $600,000 a year just for payroll for the sheriff's department. I think that we've got a great staff with the Sheriff's Department. We've got great deputies. We've got a great office staff with the Sheriff's Department. I think they're doing a good job. I think that we can change the management skills of the Sheriff's Department and what's going on with the management side. But as far as employees go, I think they're doing a great, fantastic job. And I don't think that we need to add more employees to that because when you add more employees for each employee, you're adding around $40,000 per employee just in salary and benefits. If the salary is around twenty-eight dollars to $30,000 and then insurance is around the ten dollars to $12,000 per employee, that's just the salaries. Then you've got to buy more vehicles and it costs more gas. Um, I don't think that we need to add more employees when the ones we have now are doing a great job. Obviously, if you if you got new leadership that comes in, you're going to have some positions uh, to fill. Um, you know, the job of the Sheriff's Department is to protect and serve the citizens of this county. Um, obviously, you want to work well with your county commissioners uh, on your budget to keep it as low as possible. But the ultimate goal is to protect and serve the citizens of this county. So, you know, there may be times when we may need to um, add some some officers or some uh, some support staff. Um, but, um, you know, I, I think a lot of the problems that we have now in the Sheriff's Department, you know, is just, just leadership. Um, you know, being involved with, with what's going on and being proactive, um, you know, not just reactive. Right now, my budget is $538,622. I have six road deputies, one investigator, and one re resource school officer. We have another resource officer that falls up under me, but the school board pays for it. We got another road deputy that helps with investigation. So, and all together, we got nine deputies. We all got vehicles. They do a good job. They cover the county, and they're well respected. The people know them because they've been here for 20 to 30 years, the most of them. 
So I wouldn't change anything. Would I love to have more deputies cover the county more? Yes, but we do a good job. We work good with the commissioners and everything works out good for us. I've been making my way around this county visiting with the citizens for the last four to five months now. Um, I beg to differ with what the sheriff just said. Uh, his citizens do not respect the law enforcement here in this community. Uh, the reason being is because some of the deputies have, uh, I've been told that they act uh, disrespectful, they act un unappreciative, they act like it's a bother if they have to go answer a call. As sheriff, I will make sure that my deputies are well trained. I will make sure that they do their job. I will make sure that this county is covered with deputies you know, throughout the night. Uh, Fargo is a place that needs a deputy full time, not one that is up here in Cogdale or DuPont and gets called and go to Fargo. I'm gonna work with the county commissioners and, and come up with a plan with our resources to make it happen to provide coverage for this county. I've been here uh, for two and a half years now and I've yet to see a deputy on my road. Um, and that, that is the same sentiment that I'm receiving from other people in the community. Now I can't say that I'm there all the time, but you would think in two and a half years I would, I would see one. Um, I will use whatever resources that are given to me from the county commissioners. I will work within those resources. I will take my knowledge and my experience and get other resources that won't cost our taxpayers money. I don't need a new truck, a new car to uh, ride around in. I will be managing and provide a newer vehicle to my deputies. We definitely need I'm going to say two more deputies, one in investigations uh, to bring that to up to a total of two because we are going to be generating cases that will require additional people. Um, if I can't get it, you know, month one, within six months, we're going to work under my management and we're going to produce stats to show the citizens that we can seize assets that will benefit this county if you get out there and work and patrol and have people in place to do it. Um, that, that's, it all comes down to how the resources that, and employees that you have working for you are managed and supervised and held accountable. Uh, we have to have a sheriff's office that's got integrity and character uh, daily and, that, and we need to strive as a sheriff's office to make each citizen regardless of what part of the county they're in, feel that way. And uh, I, I just know that I have the experience, the management skills, the desire, and the heart to serve Clinch County and just to make it a better place by providing that service. Uh, that is the main goal. I want to provide service to the citizens of this county. All right. and. Uh and this will be our final question, said with the recent COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen a lot of instances of uh, executive orders being issued by mayors and mayors of towns and governors and counties that seem to, uh, I guess, override, our, uh, override the law of the land, the constitution of the state and of the U.S. Um, what is your opinion uh, would be as sheriff of enforcing if these executive orders like we have seen throughout well, on in the news throughout what's been going on here lately I, I assume you're talking about other orders besides just the COVID-19 yeah, like, you know, okay not, not allowing, you know kicking people out of church and you know things you've seen you know that I know that some is very isolated thankfully nothing like that's happened around here but you we have seen that in some cases and uh, First off, uh, as a leader uh, of Clinch County, I would be in a position to hopefully have the citizens respect. I'd have to work hard and get that respect. Furthermore, uh, executive orders are sent down from legislators and governors and, uh, you know, president to the governor and then to our county leaders. Um, we have to use common sense when dealing with these things. If, it, if, if an executive order comes down, 
and it don't make no sense for Clinch County, then we have to come up with a better solution by working with the governor or whoever sent that executive order down here to address our concerns and show him and prove to him or her that it don't apply in a situation here in Clinch County. Now, I'm all about doing whatever the governor says as far as um, providing guidance and keeping our citizens safe. Uh, one, one executive order or a executive decision that might be sent down in the future is like them telling us to come take your guns away. That's not going to happen. There is a medical issues and medical reasons for us to come take a gun from a, from a family member or a person, uh, but that's for his, protection, his or her protection and yours as well. But it just like the governor saying, come get the guns uh, from all your citizens, it's, it's not going to happen and I wouldn't go for it. As sheriff, you have to follow these orders. You have to kind of do what the governor says to do. As he said, you got to do it respectfully. You go to the citizens and you talk to them and ask them to not do it. And they have respect for you and they don't do it. We haven't had any problems with any of our citizens not doing what we ask. They know the law. They know what the governor puts out there. So they respect us enough to do what we ask and what the governor of Georgia asks. And as far as guns, you can't choose what orders you'll do, what laws you'll do. But as sheriff, you can say when you're going to do them and when you're not. So I wouldn't just go out there and take anybody's guns because I got guns of my own and I wouldn't want no one to take them. I think the main thing is you got to use good common sense and good judgment. Uh, uh, again, it, it, it goes back to uh, you know, building that respect with the community and, and building that integrity within the sheriff's department. Um, you know, you can work with your citizens to try to make whatever the exec executive order that comes down happen. Um, you know, and as, as far as the executive orders, um, you know, as long as they don't supersede, you know, your constitutional amendments, I think you'll be fine. Um, but it's just working together and using common sense. Well, it's like everyone else has said, we've got to use common sense solutions to law enforcement problems. Um, Clinch County is, is, I think the main problem, not problem, but things that we face with Clinch County with this COVID-19 is social distancing. There's been lots of times where there's too many people gathering at one place. Um, I think if we go back to better educating our people, just last week out of the last 57 results that the um, hospital has received back 25 people in Clinch County have tested positive out of those 57 re results. Um, that's 43 percent. Um, so COVID-19 is not going away. It's here and, and, and every day more people is getting tested and we're getting more and more positive results back. So what we're going to have to do to that is we just have to use common sense solutions in it. And it goes back to respect. And, um, and Barry, um, I, I don't think I'll ever go and lock anybody up in church. Uh, that's, that's going to church. We, we're not going to kick them out of church. Um, and I don't think anybody else up here would either. But, um, but I think we just, like I said, we've got to use common sense solutions to these approaches. Thank you. All righty. That concludes our uh, question for the sheriff and the candidates. I'll give you, we'll give you another last 30 seconds. Any other final close, closing words or comments for the people watching and listening? Once again, I want to thank everyone for, for being here. Um, Creekbox TV, the news office, WBTY, um, and Farm Bureau and Barry, I appreciate what you've done tonight. Y'all have done a great job, and everybody that got everything ready today. Um, and I want to thank everybody for being up here, Sheriff Peterson and Stephen and John. Um, it's been a good night. Um, one thing I want you to go away with, I've, I've been a leader of this community for over 10 years. Um, I know what it takes to help the people of this community. Being a sheriff isn't just about locking somebody up. It's about being there for the citizens of Clinch County. And I'm going to take my leadership experience and I'm going to be there. I'm going to make sure our sheriff's department is there for the community and for Clinch County. Thank you. And like Tom said, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming and, and being a part of this program and appreciate Farm Bureau for putting it on and Creek Box. Um, you know, I'd just like to tell everyone that I've, I've spent the last 30 years in law enforcement. Um, I, I have the leadership abilities, I have the experience, I have the education that it takes. Um, 
but you know it's it's not all about just toting a badge and a gun it's not all about law and order it's about loving your community and using the platform that you've got to bring your community together and build your community um, i've got a lot of ideas uh, visions uh, for the sheriff's department um, i feel like i can do great things with it um, you know, and it's, I just appreciate everyone for, for allowing me to come by and visit and talk with them and, and get their ideas and suggestions because I don't know it all. Um, but uh, it, it's a team effort. Uh, I'd just like to thank everybody for that. I'd just like to thank everybody that's here and supported me over the years and everybody that's having us here. I feel there's always room for improvement in anything we do. Is there room for improvement at your sheriff's office? Absolutely. Could things be better in our community? Absolutely. If re elected sheriff, do I intend on making some changes? Absolutely. Are the changes I will make for the better? I sure hope so. I intend on keeping my relationship with the citizens as open and honest as possible. I have never promised something I couldn't deliver and don't intend on changing that. I look forward to finish raising my child and enjoy grandchildren right here in Clinch County. I have a high degree of integrity and a strong family oriented morale. I look forward to helping everyone that I can with anything that I can. I strive to be a better person and a better Christian every day. With your support and vote, we can make Clinch County an even better place to live, work, retire, and enjoy every day. I have a 2016 truck that I got when I was a deputy, and I still drive it. And, Stephen, I've had several deputies tell me they've been by your house because they tell me what you're doing to it and what it looks like. So I know deputies have been by your house. But anyway... I appreciate your support and vote. Thank you, Sheriff Raymond Peterson. Again, I would just like for you to uh, look at my experience, uh, look at the fact that I've actually been a law enforcement officer who has put thousands of people uh, in jail for bad crimes that they deserve to be uh, sent there. I have also been very compassionate with their families that were left behind and made sure that their needs were taken care of uh, while their loved one was incarcerated serving whatever period of time they had. I am a very compassionate man, but I have pride in the being a law enforcement uh, officer and the 30 year uh, career that I've had. And I would love to use my experience and expertise to make Clinch County a better place and to have our sheriff's office uh, one of the most respected ones in the nation. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, candidates. Um, this concludes our 2020 political forum. We would like to thank all the candidates that came here with us this evening and was willing to uh, go through this and uh, answer the questions. We'd like to thank Creek Box for broadcasting it, for the Clinch County News for reporting it. We'd like to thank everyone that submitted questions for the forum, um, and just a reminder, uh, early voting begins May 18th. Please get out, support these candidates, make your choice, and uh, go vote for them, and thank you all for coming. Have a good night, and God bless. You're watching Creek Box TV.